Hey, what's up guys? How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to a tier list. You guys have been asking for this since Shadow Legacy came out. I, of course, have been saying that I'm going to wait till Tachanka comes out, but damn, they keep just delaying him. So at this point, I'm just going to pretend like I know how Tachanka is going to be because I have a pretty good idea of what rank I would categorize him in. And as always, I know I said this a few videos ago. I said that a lot of people are just doing these for views and such. Now, that wasn't a direct shot at anyone, by the way. I don't mean to start any beef or anything because some people were uh, calling out some people but i just think uh, a lot of the people now they see success in these tier list videos i guess with a lot of views so they just hop on the bandwagon i don't want to be like that so i just wait till all those clickbaiters go out and then i make my video so as always i'm doing the same thing i usually do the s is the must pick a meta b good c rare pick d is a useless pick and then broken which i don't know if any operators fit in that now i know tachanka was there before but we'll see as we go through but and also to clarify from the last one it was called the re-updated tier list you guys can check that out if you guys want to see like the before and after if you would like but basically meta operator if it's in meta but it's not in must pick it doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be picked in some situations like it's a must pick in some situations but as in must pick these are operators that are always good and always going to be very versatile operators so even if i put a thermite in here right sometimes you will need a thermite so in that situation he's a must pick but even though he's here so these two are really interchangeable these are just the best two as for other, all these other ones are pretty self-explanatory so i just want to start off go in order this one's in a rare order it's different than what we usually do and it has recruit for all you people that wanted me to re rank recruit you're welcome all right, so let's get into this. I don't want this to be too long as they usually end up actually being like 30 minutes, but I'm gonna go as quick as possible. But Ace with the AK-12, this is one of the operators I'm putting in must pick. The reason for this is it is more versatile than any of the other hard breachers. Now, one thing they did do, and this is in a mid-season patch for this season, they reduced how many Selmas he has. I still think it doesn't really make a big difference here. All it does is really affect how wide the ace charge is, but I just think he still fits in the same place that he did fit before this. He's just a great alternative, the Thermite, with a better weapons and a better loadout, in my opinion. You might disagree and just put him in meta, but he's one of these for sure. Alibi, I really think in a lot of situations alibi is a very good operator but ultimately you should be picking her very rarely as other operators are way more important not saying i don't like alibi or any operators i put down here i think you could be good with any operator that you play with and believe that you can be good with any operator you play with it's just a generalization for most people and this is coming from someone who plays ranked not competitive before you lose your mind Alrighty guys, Amaru, this one wasn't useless in the first tier list I ever did, and right now it's just a rare pick for me. I still think it's a pretty solid weapon. The G8 is still very, very good. I think the operator is very rarely used in the right way. If you could use it right, it's a very good operator. It's just only some sites and some situations are good for Amaru. So ultimately, she should be used in some situations. That's why I put her as rare. And now let's get into some meta operators. So in my opinion, these next two operators are both meta operators. We have Ash and bandit this is a great example of why these two are kind of interchangeable because first of all bandit is a must pick in some situations but for some objectives you don't need bandit but he's always going to be good basically anywhere and that's why he's a meta operator as for ash ash has always been a great entry fragger still has a great weapon the r4c is the go-to weapon for anyone really but yeah moving on down to bb blackbeard i'm gonna put him as a rare pick i really don't think he's as good as people make him out to be while the shield is a little bit overpowered, I just think it really prohibits your movement, makes you slower, actually is not very good at all, unless if you're sitting on a window. That's why I say it's a rare pick. As for Blitz, I'm standing at where I put him last time. I'm actually going to keep him in Broken. That is the operator I was going to put Broken. The reason I say this is he is just very obnoxious. There's only one real counter to him, and it's really Warden. I just don't like the way his shield is so powerful. Honestly, in my opinion, I think Monty's a really good shield, something like that. But this Blitz is just broken. As for Buck and Sledge, I'm going to be putting them both in the same spot. I'm going to be putting them in the meta. And that's for both of them. Now, I did have Buck here last season and the season before that, but it's just a nerf after nerf with Buck, I feel like. He was way better with the ACOG, in my opinion. Now he only has 1.5 times. He lost the frags. He has a claymore now instead of frags. It just doesn't really fit the operator as much. If he had the frags still, I think he would maybe be a must pick, but Sledge and 
Buck. Their their gap is getting so close together. They're very similar now. I think they're both still good at the same jobs, really. Buck's better at vertical upwards, and I think Sledge is better at looking downwards. But I think they're pretty equal, and I both think they are very meta for any vertical play, which should be in any rank, really. All right, the first good operator. This is staying exactly where I had her or had him before, and that's Capiteo. So he's a good operator for some players that know how to use him. It's really not that hard, but just people struggle at actually using him. He has a good weapon. He's a three-speed operator and the bow. You get the smokes and you get the fire, of course. If you don't use these, then don't use Capiteo because it is basically useless if you don't use the actual gadget. The smoke grenades can be so good in ranked, you can smoke out where you're going to plant, and then of course, you could cover the plant with the fire ones, or at least just block entries off. Just think of it as being Goyo, but on attack, or yeah, attack. Moving on down, we got Castle, rare pick, same as I had him before. I genuinely think he's basically just a rare pick at this point. This is one of the operators that I'm going to make one of those like rework videos that I do on. Just, just some concepts and uh, concept art and stuff of Castle. I think he would be very good to be reworked. It would be very interesting to see what they could do with him. I have some great ideas for him. But if you guys want to see that, I will be posting that. But other than that, you meant you got the UMP5 or with the 1.5 times now, he uh, the UMP5 now does have the 1.5 times. So Castle did get a little bit of a buff. Unfortunately, Pulse didn't get the same treatment with the 1.5 times, but I understand why completely. But moving on down, I, we got Cav. Now this is speaking from someone that is not under gold. I mean, I'm, a, I'm in the middle of plat range and I think Cav is absolutely useless. It never works out. Now I know, as always, I'm gonna get the spam comments saying godly noob, I understand. The dude knows how to play a uh, Cav, but generally it does not work against any coordinated team because they will just refrag you instantly. So there's no reason to even play Cav. You might as well just go play a different roamer, such as Vigil. Moving on down to Clash, I think Useless is also one, and this is for ranked. Clash is actually really, really meta whenever it comes down to comp. But as for ranked, unless if you're playing with someone, it's really tough to make Clash work. And now if you have a coordinated team, you can shoot this bad boy all the way up, but I'm talking generalizations here. You should not be playing Clash, especially if you're a solo queue. This is one of the operators that changed a lot, Doc. I think I had him maybe, I think I might have had him in must pick or at least meta or somewhere around here. I don't think he is that anymore. I mean, he only has a 1.5 time, so he's not the go-to for spawn kills anymore. That would be his other little buddy here, Rook. So Rook will be staying in good. That's where he was. And Rook is just flat out better than Doc now. Doc doesn't have any advantage over anyone else. He has a weaker weapon than most play players. And if you're gonna, if you're just wanting a 1.5 times, why not just go with Lesion with the T5 SMG, for example? But yeah, Doc's weapons, very underwhelming. His gadget is very situational. It was very good whenever he was a spawn killer because he could just res himself if he were to go down. But that's just not the case anymore. And I think this is where these two operators lay now. Rook has finally taken over Doc. Dokubi, nothing new here. I'm just going to keep her in good. And I genuinely think this is where he does belong. He's a good operator, or she's a very good operator. Somewhat toxic in some situations, but for roam clearing, nothing beats a Dokubi lion setup. And add Jackal to the mix, and there is no roaming allowed on that map. Echo is still a must pick, in my opinion. They always try to change him a little bit here and there, take away the shield, etc. But overall, Echo is still a very banned operator, and it's good for good reason, very powerful. And the same thing with maestro i'm keeping him up here as well now they got some interesting things going on with maestro they're trying to tweak with the shotgun give it a uh, a higher magnification sco scope personally i still think the alda is the way to go here and then you have the rotation hole 556 five, basically a super good operator and these two both lie in the same area because they are both uh, plant denial somewhat intel whatever you want they're really a hybrid there between intel plant denial and just straight up being annoying now, Ella, very another operator that gets tweaked quite a lot. Still think she's good at this current state. Of course, recoil is the main thing with her. They always try to switch up the pattern. Personally, right where it is right now seems pretty balanced. You don't get a lot of range. It's not just a laser beam, and it's still pretty good. As for the gadget, it got a little bit of a nerf since the concussions don't slow down sensitivity anymore. Same thing with Echo, really. But it's a really subtle nerf. You might have not even noticed it, but if you haven't noticed it, whenever you run into like Grismont Mines or get concussioned, it's not actually going to affect your movement speed. Finca, this is my rare operator. I'm really loading up the rare so far, but hopefully that changes here soon. But Finca is very, very rare and very, very situational. 
in my opinion, it actually screws up the recoil, even though it makes it straight, but I'm already pulling down to how I think the recoil is going to be, right? So whenever someone finka boosts me, it screws up my recoil and I just don't expect it. Maybe it's better on console. I don't know. But for me, that's a super rare pick. You could also revive people too, but that once again, super rare situation. Frost got the 1.5 times. Now, I don't think that puts him anywhere other than rare, which is where he was last season. But in my opinion, uh, Frost with the 1.5 times is a little bit better. But that fire rate is just horrendous. It's awful. It's worse than the UMP, in my opinion. So the weapon wise, I mean, Frost is pretty bad. The Frost traps, though, they're so unexpected. So honestly, as long as you know how to place them in good spots under windows in good places like that over places where people mantle without looking down, not only will you get a few easy kills sometimes, you also now have the 1.5 times. Now, moving on down to Fuse. This one's interesting. I had him in Useless before, and I had him in, like, Broken before that. But as everything is changing here, I just keep on bringing him up. The utility destruction is what is really king with Fuse. And now that is more than ever because I'm going to find my buddy here, Thatcher. Thatcher is no longer a must-pick, in my opinion, because he cannot destroy utility. Now, someone that can destroy utility from above that would be fuse so in my opinion this change to thatcher actually affected fuse more than it affected thatcher thatcher is still good for what he does as in getting bandit charges and stuff off walls but he does not destroy them and that's one of the main things why thatcher was so overpowered now he's not so much and i think fuse can really roll into that position so that's my reasoning behind that Let's add up some more useless operators. This is an operator that I made a rework video on, and that is Glass. I really want to see a rework on Glass here soon. A lot of options, honestly, right now, just a quick fix would be give him a real secondary, like a SMG, just like how Kali does. But for now, it looks like we're out of luck. It's a useless operator. Goyo, rare operator. Very situational. Only has two Goyo Vulcan shields or whatever they're called. This was an operator that was really, really good in Pro League because it had three Vulcan shields. Now it does not. It only has two shields, and I just don't think it's that good, especially in ranked, which is basically what I'm basing all this off of. So that's the whole thing there. I also don't believe, correct me if I'm wrong, I don't believe he got the 1.5 times, unlike Mira. They both have the vector, but I think I very am pretty positive about this is Goyo did not get the 1.5 times. Now, Gridlock, I think she's a very good operator overall had her in rare pick before and that's because nomad in general nomad i'm gonna put her up here in meta these are the two flank watching operators now i've learned how to play gridlock over the past few months i've been playing her more often especially for the mastery i made on her i just wanted to play her a bunch just to get an idea of how i should be playing her instead and i realized a lot of things that i didn't realize before as in always all these things if one of these operators are lower than you think i should put them try to educate me on it why I should think it's a better than it actually is. For the most part, I understand most in-depth details about every single operator, but I might have missed a few simple things, such as gridlock. I never thought about how good she was post-plant, but once I started using her a lot, post-plant with gridlock is way better than nomad, but as for flank watching, nomad is way better, in my opinion. Of course, this is all my opinion, so don't get triggered by any of this, but I gotta say gridlock is very, very good for post-plant. I'm gonna put her under good. Obana is still the Hatch Queen. That's all she is, though. They said they're going to actually be giving her a rework, quote-unquote, very soon, if you've been keeping up with my videos there on all that news and stuff. But basically, I'm pretty surprised that they're reworking her. I thought they have her where they want her, but I guess not because they have Thermite and Ace, which are both, quite frankly, the better operators, more versatile operators. In no world is Obana better than either of these two when it comes down to hard breach walls. She's only better at hatches, and both of them are better than Ace at hatches, but Ace has the better loadout. That's my justification for why they're in this order. They're all good in their specific spots, though, and the Type 89 is pretty well on Habana. As for Iana, this is a good operator as well. This is one of the operators that is really, really good whenever you're with a team. Otherwise, it's just kind of useless intel, in my opinion. Now, the reason I say it's useless intel is because intel always changes. But if you have a teammate following your hologram, first of all, you have unlimited drones, basically, with this hologram. And you also have your normal drones, of course. So intel is not an issue here. But if you have nowhere to put that intel, then it's really useless. So if you're not using comms or anything like that, Yana's really not even worth it at that point. You might as well just play Ash or Zof at that point. 
Now I'm gonna be keeping these three operators here. I'm gonna be showing you them all, okay? They're kind of counters to each other, at least these two are. So I'm gonna put these both under must picks because of each other. Now IQ doesn't get picked a ton, but I think she should be picked pretty much every round. First of all, you have the G8. You don't have the ACOG anymore, but the G8 is very good with the holographic anyways. And then Valkyrie. Valkyrie, I don't know why this operator is not banned more than Echo. Absolutely the most powerful operator. I have a whole full playlist on Valkyrie spots if you want to know the best spots. Obviously, people are catching on to them once I make videos like that and they get views. People start using them and I've been able to see these spots be used more often, which is cool, but they're very good spots. So you're going to need an IQ for that. So both of these are very, very must picks especially when the other one is in play. Jackal, same thing. There's a reason why he's banned. He is up here with Echo. They are the most banned operators and for a good reason. Jackal is annoying whenever it comes down to roaming. You can't really roam whenever they have a Jackal. That's why he's banned so much. Very good operator and also the weapon, the C7E. If you haven't noticed the new Halloween event, if you guys have played that or if this is after that and you have played that, there's a reason why the C7E, the AK-12, the R4C are the weapons. Those are the three really top tier weapons in the game and there is a reason why these operators are up here this one has r4c this one's the ak-12 this has the c70 as for my adsers we're gonna put them both in the same spot i don't think these have changed these are meta operators you really do need to pick one of these every single round but i don't want to put them both but up there but they are both meta operators are always going to be good in any meta in my opinion as long as they don't change the operators too much now I've stated I want operators like defenders to get a trophy system, honestly, that to lower Jaeger's pick percentage. There's a reason why he's picked so much is you really do need an ADS in most situations. You want them to have to burn your ADS and quite frankly, well, my is just not as good at that. So I would like to see like a secondary gadget that is like a trophy system that destroys one or something along those lines. But yeah, I always say the same thing with this one. Jaeger is better if you want to roam and I think well, my is a really good anchor. Just remember to make the magnets away from you. Don't put the magnets above you because it actually attracts the stuns and the nades and stuff. It is a magnet, so it attracts it. A lot of people don't know that for some reason. Kayid, I'm gonna put him actually in meta now, and that is because of the 1.5 times. I swear, a lot of these operators, they didn't really change fundamentally, obviously. Kayid, the 1.5 times is awesome, honestly. Makes me wanna play him more often. Now, Bandit's still better at walls, but Kayid, you get the hatches and stuff, so very versatile and definitely a meta op. Operator. So that is a safe pick there. The 1.5 times makes all the difference there. Kali just does not match up to Thatcher in most situations, but it did change it a little bit. Now, this I don't think has changed any bit. Kali for me started way down here, like one of those operators, but as she got the new SMG, that was way better than what she had previously. I think she had the C7E previously, and then she got the SMG 9. SMG 9 is way better. But nothing has changed since then besides Thatcher getting kind of nerfed because Callie is the only one that can actually destroy anything now. Still though, it's a sniper, way different. And moving on over, this is another operator that got the 1.5 times. I don't know where I had him previously, but he is a good operator. I believe he was in good already. It really is just depends on where you place them, as with a lot of operators, but more, specific, more specifically with Capkin, you don't want to be placing them in stupid spots. I'm sure you know that already, but don't place them in stupid spots and you get the 1.5 times. Now, I think the 1.5 times makes all the difference for a lot of these operators. Also, what's really nice about Capkin now and a lot of these longer setup operators is you now have the reinforcement pool where you don't actually your team is not specifically relying on you to get the two reinforcements down with an operator like capkin it might be nice to be able to run around and get all your traps set up before the round actually starts and not be so tied up to reinforcing the site legion this is another one the t5 smg with the 1.5 times just does not seem right i don't think I don't think honestly that the T5 should have the 1.5 times, but for now I'm not going to complain because I have been using Legion a lot. It's probably my most used defender other than maybe Jaeger that I've been using, and that's because of this 1.5 times. I always liked Legion, but they did nerf him a bit last season by making the goose more invisible, making the symbol go away, and all all sorts of things. Not No more damage right when you touch it, but it's still good, and the T5 SMG is pretty broken as for an operator that actually receives that t5 smg in the mid patch so this is honestly the latest tier list you're going to get because all these changes happened in the mid-season patch now i had oryx as useless before i'm gonna say he's a rare pick now hear me out 
Works is not the best here. I still think it's a very odd operator in the first place. Kind of a stretch. I don't know why they even put this operator in the game. No hate, but just doesn't. it didn't make any sense. But I think the rare situation now here is you have the T5 SMGs, which is way better than the MP5, which, of course, Malusi got stuck with. But Oryx is very good for runouts. If you want to know runouts and stuff, Oryx is the move. With the dash, you're able to actually get to the spawns. I know it's a little scummy, but that's why I say he's a rare pick. This is not an operator you could pick every single round, but if you have a run out in mind, might as well just go with Oryx and get a head start with the, the Rema dash. Lion, one of those really, really good operators for roam clearing. I can't say he's anything more than good at this point, and I think he's a pretty rare pick as well. I just think there's a lot of operators we need now more than Lion. Now, I still think he is a very good operator for some, but most people just use the gadget wrong, unfortunately. So I'm not going to really promote him too much. I still think his weapons are pretty good. I think his ability is still very good. But if Jackal's available, you're always going to pick Jackal. And quite frankly, you're going to pick a lot of operators up here before you go and pick Lion. Maverick, as always, we're going to put him in meta. I don't think he'll ever fall out of meta. The loadout's just too good. You get the M4, you get the frags, you get, uh, of course, the Maverick Torch. That's really all you need to know about that. Kind of an alternative to Thatcher at this point. Personally, if I'm going for gadgets and stuff, I'm usually going to be bringing a Maverick now. I just think it's more easy. I think the gadget's a little bit easier to use for actually destroying bandits because Thatcher can no longer do that. So a very good alternative to these operators. I think they all kind of fall under the same wheelhouse here. And then Malusi, I had her under meta. I just don't see why she's getting banned so much now. I think they really kept nerfing her, and I think it's just out of instinct now to ban her because you just know that she sucked before to play against, but now she has the MP5, right? Which, first of all, is a very weak weapon. It's, it's only good for some operators because it has the ACOG. For example, Rook, you get the 2X. But with Malusi... The Banshee's good, don't get me wrong, but there's so many things, there's so many operators that you take to be able to take them out. For example, I'm usually always in games where there's an Ash, a Sledge, or even a Zofia, or pretty much anything. You could even knife it, so you don't even need that thing need that stuff so with the range being the reduced the weapon being nerfed just don't think he's, uh, she's a meta operator anymore I don't think she should be banned as much as it is banned as well at least in the ranks I play she's banned all the time and now Mira 1.5 times this is a operator that is a must pick in sites that you know Mira spots if you know a Mira spot on the map pick this operator the 1.5 times, super fun operator as well, in my opinion. I think it's fun to be able to set up the map however you want to. And then you have the super shorty for rotations and C4 holes. You also get the C4, of course. Definitely a meta operator. Now, as you guys know, I think Montaigne is my favorite shield. Now, there was a change. I also noted that in my last passion notes thing is that's the shield breaking thing. So I don't think that had a really too big of an effect on Montaigne. All it really did is just change how he flinches if he's getting knifed and such, which is kind of a big deal but the shield break isn't too big of a deal in my opinion i still think he serves his purpose very well very good for planting very good for baiting definitely not anyone that you're going to want to pick every round if you are planning on getting any kills unless if you're just a beam with a pistol but for most this is a good operator to fall back on as a support player if you're looking for a support role mozzie um this is an operator that's been from here to here, in my opinion. I just think he really floats around the 5-3 man. I really liked it when he had the super shorty. I liked that he was able to create rotation holes as a roamer. I just think there's not enough operators that could create rotation holes with impacts and stuff. But with the super shorty, that's where I think he strived at. But other than that, man, I think he's a rare pick. Now, the main reason for that is he has all the utility to be a roamer. But the unfortunate thing is he's a two-speed, two-armor. So I don't know. He's really just a high hybrid kind of an awkward operator to play not saying he's not good for a lot of operators but also wish he could be a three speed that would make him a top tier roamer for sure and now for mute my surprise must pick mute with the 1.5 times you now have a good weapon and the utility is fantastic with the new ping system this is a must pick if you don't have this then basically a drone can be anywhere can get in anywhere and just yellow ping you the yellow pings are so strong that's why i think mute is a must pick 
pick. Not for walls, if you're going to try to get breaches and stuff, pick Kaid or Mute or Bandit, I meant. But Mute is best for area denial or map denial or intel denial. You don't want intel on you, especially if you are an anchor. So Nock, this is a operator that is a rare pick for me personally. Definitely think some people can use her well, but in my opinion very situational. I can only do it sometimes because there's a lot of caveats to the whole silent thing. First of all, you can't be running. Second, you can't be jumping. There's just a lot of little things like that that kind of turn me off of knock. Regardless, I still think has its place for rushing, but I just don't think she is a top tier operator. That's all that really comes down to. Next up on the list, Pulse is a situational operator, but I'm going to slide him into good because a lot of these operators do seem to be somewhat situational. Why they're not in meta per se, but Pulse, you just need to understand map knowledge. You need to understand vertical pressure because C4ing from underneath. I have a whole Pulse video if you guys want to check out how to play her or him a little bit better. Only thing that's really struggles with him is the time to switch from the radar scanner to your weapon does take a little bit longer than I would like. It used to be overpowered. If you guys remember like year one, year two, this was a super, super duper overpowered operator. You were able to switch back and forth, C4, use a shotgun. It was just super overpowered. But looking back into year five, still think it's a good operator, just more situational now than ever. And these two are going to be fun for me. Smoke and Tachanka. So Tachanka is obviously the emblems not updated to the latest one because as the time I'm making this, which is 11 to the operator, the operator still isn't on live servers, it's only on test servers. So that's pretty annoying, but I still think smoke is meta. But as for Tachanka, I just don't quite know yet because I haven't played him in competitive. Now, what I think, though, is people are still going to fall onto smoke, quite frankly, because they spent all this time getting to know the SMG 11. I just don't think Tachanka is as good as smoke. Now, I do still think he's a good operator, still very good for area denial. But as for plant denial, I think smoke is better for that. But just straight up area denial, Tachanka is better there. So I'm really thrown for words here. I hope he ends up being meta, but I just don't see him being picked as much as people would like to be him to be. I still think smoke is the go-to here for the area denial operators. Twitch for me, rare pick, good weapon, pretty poor gadget. A lot of operators I would pick before Twitch, such as Cali, Maverick, Thatcher, that's three, just to name a few. If you're really good with the F2, that's where you would change that accordingly. But for me, the F2 is, eh, it's, it's good, but a little bit crazy. And Vigil for me is the must pick Roamer. And I say this completely out of personal preference. I just think Vigil is the go-to for anyone roaming. There's nothing better than not being able to be seen while droning, of course. So that is why Vigil for me is a must pick if you're going to be roaming. Warden, useless. Ying, for me, rare. So I don't know if these need any justification. This is another operator that needs reworked very badly. A few videos ago, I made a video about Warden's rework. So these are basically all operators that I, quite frankly, have thought about reworking so many times. I wish they would rework them. Warden and Glass are in dire need out of all operators to need a rework. I need these operators to get rework. ASAP. As for Ying, just a rare pick, in my opinion. The only thing in my opinion opinion that ying is actually good for is either a rushing or b burning utility as an ads is which is a big deal i just don't think a lot of people use it correctly and if you're gonna just use a different operator honestly you can burn an ads with anything you don't need to bring ying and i just don't think the gadget's as useful as other attacking gadgets that's why I also personally am not in love with the weapon. Zof, I had her as a must pick. I'm actually going to put her right by Ash. I think they're very similar. I do think Zof is a little bit better, but they're both meta operators. They're always going to be good entry fraggers as long as they don't change the fundamentals of the operator. And finally, the brand new Sam Fisher Zero. I think he's A. I think he's a good operator, a meta operator, but he's not getting picked as much as I thought he was going to be. In my opinion, I've said this many, many, many times on this one. He is the attacking version of Valkyrie. Don't use him for the tasers. Use him for intel. Intel, intel, intel. Use those Argus camps. Your primary goal should not be able, should not be to use that tase. If anything, you should just avoid using it in general. As for weapons, though, you have a weapon that's very similar to the AK-12, and you also have the MP7 with a 1.5 times. So overall, that's solid. And as for the last one, 
I'll put Recruit up here for you boys. Some of you guys are crazy when I don't put Recruit up here, but Recruit is actually low-key really, really, really good. Now, you can't really play him unless if you actually don't have any other operators, so sorry, folks, but uh, for all you new players out there, don't be afraid to use Recruit. But yeah, this is the tier list. This is why I don't really like making a lot of these. I don't like clickbaiting, clickbaiting these a lot. I feel like people do that all the time, but quite frankly, these lists don't change that often. I feel like yearly, if we did these yearly, they would change a little bit more, but as I do it every single season, a few operators change here and there, but I know a lot of you guys like it, so I'm going to keep doing them for you. I'm just not going to be doing it right when the season starts i'm gonna let all the other people go ahead and do their thing and i will follow suit afterwards anyways thank you all for watching appreciate you and leave a like please that would greatly appreciate it get this tier list to the top and i'll see you in the next one peace out